Good evening. I'm calling this meeting of the Wayne Township Board of Education to order. Adequate notice of this public work session and executive meeting setting forth time, date, and location has been provided in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act on January 10th, 2022 by prominently posting a copy in the bulletin board in the lobby of the offices of the Board of Education, which is public, a public place reserved for such announcements. Transmitting a copy of this notice to the record, the Wayne Today, tap into Wayne.net, the Municipal Clerk, and the District website. Roll call, Mr. Moffitt. Mr. Bubba? Here. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mrs. Kazan? Here. Mr. Pavlak? Here. Mr. Prasakos? Present. Mrs. Putup? Present. And Mrs. Wenting? Here. Um, we will now do the flag salute, followed by a moment of silence. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Tobat. So May is a special time in the school calendar in that we take time to recognize a number of school employees based on national celebrations scheduled for the beginning of May. This started on May 1st, which is National Principals Day, and also the start of Teacher Appreciation Week. May 6th is the start of Nurse Appreciation Week, and late in April, the district recognized all of our administrative professionals. A big thank you to all of our employees for their dedication and commitment, and also for their perseverance during the worst days of the pandemic. What was originally expected to be a two-week temporary health emergency turned into a historic pandemic that continued well into 2022. Our staff rose to the occasion, and collectively, the school system was a source of strength and stability for the community. It's not possible without the combined and extraordinary efforts of our staff to make the best of a very bad situation. Until recently, our nurses worked around the clock, starting in 2020, to carry out their regular duties, plus contact tracing, reporting, temperature checks for athletics, and even volunteering to assist our local health department with contact tracing and other tasks. Our administrative professionals came to work even when schools were closed and even when no one else is in the building to take phone calls and to answer questions. In many cases, also fielding phone calls from members of the school community who are struggling. In addition to adopting their teaching methods and, our, and their lessons to a virtual world, our teachers switched to teaching two classes period one class that was remote, and then another class that was in person, including planning for two audiences. Some came to work even though they were aware, due to medical reasons, that they were placing themselves at risk. Because of the massive staffing shortages, teachers stepped up in thousands of situations to cover classes and take on additional duties and responsibilities to keep our schools open. Last but not least, our principals, day in and day out, found a way to keep our schools open by covering classes, contact tracing, and dealing with the countless difficult situations created by COVID. They were a major reason why we were able to stay open, especially in January of 2022, when we had a major spike in COVID cases that led to many school districts closing. So I'd also like to mention in our recognition part, uh, Special Education Week, it's recognized from May 8th to 14th. The Student Support Services Department kicked off the month leading up to this week with one of the Saturday Unified Stars events where preschool through young adult students attended a fun social event. The Office of Student Support Services is also planning another Unified Stars Bowling event on Friday, May 13th at T-Bowl Lanes in Wayne. Details about the event will be shared through the district newsletter. This past week, Team Wayne, made up of staff and family members, represented the district in the Lincoln Tunnel Challenge 5K, supporting Special Olympics. We look forward to making this a yearly event. Also during this year's Special Education Week, the Special Education Parents Advise Advisory Group and the Wayne Special Parents Association will have their meeting on Tuesday, May 10th at 7.30. Parents may participate in person at Anthony Wayne Middle School or virtually. 
The virtual meeting link will be found on the CPAG Facebook, along with the district newsletter. All are welcome. So now on to my administrative report. This board meeting is one of the most important meetings of the school year because the Board of Education will be voting on a staffing plan for the upcoming school year, as well as a school district budget. The budget was changed, and Mr. Moffitt will be completing a presentation in a few moments to detail those specifics. Um, a few other details. Yesterday, we sent out a letter to parents detailing the standardized testing program that will be implemented throughout the district starting next week and extending through the end of May. This year, our administration and testing coordinators put together a list of frequently asked questions to help parents to better understand the assessment process and testing conditions. Advanced placement testing will be ending, and the New Jersey graduation assessments for the 11th graders were completed in March. The primary use of the data remains to help school districts with identifying learning needs and evaluating student progress, and we encourage full participation for all students as we continue to address learning loss at all grade levels. We're proud to share that we're taking another step forward as a school district by launching a new Speak Up for Safety tip line that will allow students to easily report threats of violence, bullying, peers in crisis, and other imminent concerns that affect students' well-being and security. The Speak Up for Safety tip line will be continually monitored by gaggle safety professionals 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year long. Non-life-threatening tips will be quickly routed to the designated school or district staff members, and in severe situations, district-appointed contacts will be immediately notified to take action. In the most urgent cases in which a student is in immediate danger and Gaggle is unable to notify a district-appointed contact, Gaggle will alert law enforcement to intervene. The Gaggle Speak Up for Safety tip line integrates directly with Google Workspace for Education, which students already use on a daily basis, so there's no need for students to download a mobile app or remember a phone number. Once students receive training in the use of Speak Up, we will launch the tip line in late May. Um, as you may have heard, the district has already established a goal for the upcoming year where weighted enrichment classes will be part of a, a discussion along with a number of other issues related to post-secondary planning. And um, basically we understand that the news about a goal for next year is not addressing one of the immediate concerns, which is the weighting of enrichment classes now. But the district will be moving ahead with a committee and following our normal procedures to address this single issue during the summer months. If the committee determines that a change is necessary, then we would be able to make that change for the upcoming school year. So at this time, I'd like to move on into an announcement, an important announcement that it's my pleasure to make every year. I would like to announce our valedictorians and our salutatorians. Okay. So starting with Wayne Valley, Alyssa Sherry, valedictorian. Alyssa will be attending Brown University in the fall, where she hopes to study neuropsychology and political science at Wayne Valley. She serves as the captain of the field hockey team, executive student council president, and editor-in-chief of the school newspaper. She also is a member of the National Honor Society and the Peer Leaders eBoard. Beyond her contributions to Wayne Valley, Alyssa interns with the Writer's Circle while she leads writing workshops for students of all ages and compiles the Writer's Circle Journal. Over the summers, Alyssa interns at Finding the Fabulous, a program that teaches leadership skills and self-advocacy for young girls. Pre-pandemic, she worked at the Ramapo College Mindfulness Center. She's a staff editor for the international literary journal Body Without Organs, and her writing has appeared in several other publications. Additionally, Alyssa is an AP scholar with distinction, a National Merit Commended Student, recipient of the Rotary Youth Leadership Award, first team all-county and all-conference athlete, a volunteer with Habitat for Humanity, and a former ambassador to the Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership Seminar. For the Wayne Valley Senior Superlatives, she is voted most likely to succeed and most likely to be president by her classmates. So now we're going to go on to our salutatorian, Daniel Campos, who will be attending Georgia Tech University. Daniel will be attending um, in the fall on a full scholarship where he hopes to study physics. At Wayne Valley, he participated on the boys soccer team, spring track, the Model UN, piano for American College of Musicians, math league, National Honor Society executive board, and web manager, private volunteer tutoring, ARCO engineering, Daniel wants to pursue, pursue a degree in physics, going as far as getting his PhD and doing research for a living. Daniel was accepted into Columbus, um, you know, Columbia's Science Honors Program and part of the National Honors Society Executive Board. In his free time after school, he does tutoring for students struggling in math and science. He has spoken very highly among the staff of Wayne Valley. He's part of the National Honors Society Executive Board and helps organize events for the chapter. 
He also manages the website to ensure that members are able to sign up for events that help the community. As quoted by an English teacher at Wayne Valley, this talented senior is, without debate, dependable, bright, creative, and most importantly, hardworking. So now on to Wayne Hills. So um, John, let me make sure I say the name correctly, Ospak, okay. So John Ospak, he'll be our valedictorian and he'll be attending Princeton University. The class of 2022 valedictorian um, is a student athlete, being a multiple NJSIA state qualifier in wrestling, as well as being district and county champ. Jack has been a part of the National Honor Society, the Spanish Honor Society, the Math Honor Society, as well as a founding officer of the debate club at Wayne Hills. He has participated in both Math and Science League and was a National Merit Committed Scholar as well as an AP Scholar with distinction. Jack will be attending Princeton University in the fall and will concentrate in operations, research, and financial engineering. Okay. And then finally, we have Darina Yushenka, salutatorian, who will be attending Princeton University. During her time at Wayne Hills, she's been a member of the Wayne Hills Patriot Marching Band for four years, spending the last two years as the band's drum major when they won the Metropolitan Regional Championship in 2021. In addition, she's president of the Wayne Hills Triumph Music Honor Society. As a member of four years of the Wayne Hills FBLA chapter, she served as president this year and placed fifth in emerging business issues during the FBLA State Championship Conference in 2019, third in graphic design in 2021, and top 10 in data analysis in 2022. She was also recognized as an AP Scholar with Distinction She's been a member and officer of the National Honor Society, the French Honor Society, and she spent over 150 hours teaching different students um, during the COVID-19 pandemic, various subjects such as elementary reading, writing, and physics through nonprofit organizations, Learn to Be, and SIO Vitual, and plans to continue being a member of these organizations post high school. She is excited to continue her education at Princeton University studying physics next fall. Okay, so congratulations to our valedictorians and salutatorians. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Amazing accomplishments, especially at such an early age. Um, so just a quick update for COVID. So currently our COVID numbers continue to increase, but very slightly, and they remain manageable. As far as the HIV report goes, I'm reporting the following data related to harassment, intimidation, and bullying incidents. There were seven incidents of HIV investigated since my last report, and only one of those cases was deemed to be an actual case of HIV. That concludes my report. Thank you. Mr. Moffat? Ms. Leidig? Good evening, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight. This is uh, what is considered to be the uh, budget hearing. This is something, by regulation, we have to hold in public. That's why we relocated the board meeting to this space, is to provide as much information uh, on the uh, annual district uh, budget process and report out on the uh, potential adopted budget, which will be considered tonight. Uh, it is on the agenda tonight for action under V2, Emergent School Resource under Finance. I would like to point out as uh, we go through just an overview, as alluded to by uh, Dr. Toback, uh, we had some uh, budget changes tonight and uh, we did discuss them last uh, time, uh, basically in April 21st meeting. The board had a unique situation that uh, presented itself during the process, so I'll go over that during the, the presentation. Uh, again, this budget, uh, we do continue to have a, a positive and solid financial uh, condition. Uh, we have a healthy surplus as of June 21st. We've built, uh, the board has supported uh, the efforts for building a capital reserve. Uh, with newly established maintenance reserve is also in play. 
um, and we've continued to use that through the year, um, as you may have uh, seen in past agendas that we have taken withdrawals out of both of these accounts recently. Um, and then uh, lower on the slide, you see there, there are some budget changes tonight uh, that will change what was advertised in the newspaper and up to this point, which was uh, the, the use of budgeted surplus, which was at a million uh, and a half uh, dollars, and uh, also considered, and you'll see a reduction in the tax levy, which will move from a 2% uh, with an assumption that we made with the tentative budget adoption, will be reduced to one and a half. But again, I'll, I'll be going over in more details as we go. When we talk about a healthy position, this is, uh, uh, you can see the change of uh, not only the surplus, which uh, you see the first uh, row and column, it starts back in June 16. That's just basically uh, as far back as I could fit on a slide, but it, it goes further than that. Uh, but you see 2% surplus, which is a statutory situation where we can carry a surplus uh, of, of basically an emergency reserve in the event things change uh, during the, the fiscal year. Uh, as you see, it starts at a 3.4 in, in 2016. It's grown to $7 million, which is somewhat unique because of COVID. As you see on the footnote, uh, it normally is 2%, but during COVID for two years, uh, not only uh, for June 20, uh, 2021, we'll also be able to uh, stretch out into June 2022. Uh, which would be at that 4%. They allow districts to, to carry 4%. Um, you also will see the capital reserve, how we've had, again, these are just fiscal year end positions. There, there's a lot of ins and out flows to each reserve during the years, but this is a position as of June 30 of that uh, specific year. Um, and you also see a third row down is the maintenance reserve, which was established, and we were able to uh, put in a first deposit, which was 3.8. Uh, we've used that uh, extensively this year to deal with some maintenance projects. Uh, so we're, we're, we're definitely uh, in around about ha half a million dollars there now that we've used it, and we anticipate making another uh, deposit with uh, this next budget period. Budgeted fund balance, uh, again, I'll address this a little bit more specifically, but uh, this is use of a prior year uh, money, meaning, for example, in, in June, the fiscal year uh, for June 16, you see uh, the three million, so we've used that from a prior budget year to use as a revenue source. So why am I pointing this out? Is that is something that the Board of Education has identified as, as basically addressing and kind of move slowly downwards because as you can understand, if you're looking at a, a revenue uh, in your budget, uh, that's a pretty big hole to uh, uh, really deal with, to get back to zero. If you look at the uh, 1.75, you have to raise that this year to use it next year. So structurally, it's an issue, and it's also an issue to get back to zero. You would have to uh, increase the tax levy or some other revenues to offset that in that amount just to get back to zero. So that, that was a uh, pretty big uh, goal the board had, and uh, we're addressing that in this budget that we're presenting tonight. These are some important dates that we've gone through. Uh, it's an it's a, a annual process. It starts well before November, December. Uh, we work on the budget in central office, uh, November, December. A lot of the building uh, school level uh, personnel, including the school um, principals, uh, help develop the budget. Central office reviews them uh, in January, February, March 3rd. Um, we, um, we had a little bit of a delay in the state aid uh, information, which is uh, uh, an annual process where the state of New Jersey identifies how much money they'll be giving to school districts. So I was a little bit delayed, but uh, that was March 3rd, March 10. Um, we worked on that fi uh, financial number with the idea that uh, we were finished uh, with the budget on the 16th, uh, which was also the second uh, uh, budget here, uh, budget discussion and input for it from the general public. So that's the 16th. And the 17th, as it was approved in a tentative budget, we submitted it to the county office. Again, but, but really ahead of schedule. The schedule requires March 28th deadline, but we got it in on the 17th, and we had a, luckily a quick turnaround, and we were able to get it approved by the county office uh, and advertised on the 13th, uh, which leads to tonight, which is the May 5th uh, public hearing. Uh, this is roughly how your school budget looks as it was approved tentatively, and this, this is really based on information on the tentative budget because officially hasn't changed yet. It's going to be considered tonight. Uh, so you have about 91% comes from real estate taxes, which shows the tax levy. With 
which a little bit of the pie on the top uh, is the 7.26, which is state aid. That's basically uh, the main part of your budget is supported by those two revenue streams. On the appropriation side, um, you're looking basically at uh, academic programs is the biggest portion, that's 44%, with employee benefits at roughly 23%. Slide just kind of slipped down a little bit, but uh, I'm not sure what happened on the little out of sorts. Uh, but uh, the general fund balance, uh, I should say the general fund budget is 178, if you can see it, it's a little bit out of, I'm not sure if we can fix that, but uh, it's 178. And just so you all know, this will be posted tomorrow uh, on, in the budget section on the business office uh, webpage. Um, so let's go back to the general fund. The general fund is our operating budget for 2023. It's 178 as approved on a tentative budget. That was an increase um, of 1.6 million, which is about a, about a percent increase. Uh, as it relates to the school tax levy, the school tax levy was uh, and bound to increase uh, to 162 million, uh, basically 0.5, uh, which is an increase of 3.1 million, if you could see that. Um, and then as a percentage, that is about a 2% increase. What does that mean on an annual basis for the average homeowner? That's about $138 uh, a year. You can't see below that. It basically, um, the school tax levy does not um, include any type of uh, waivers that are adjustments that we can make to the budget for health care um, or for enrollment growth, nor does it include any bank cap. Uh, also, this includes use of $1.5 million uh, increase, uh, I should say, use of general fund balance. Some influencing factors. Um, we received an increase in state aid, uh, which was a million, roughly a million four. We all, and that is what they call formula aid. That comes out, like I said, in, in about March. Uh, state extraordinary aid, which comes out usually the end of June, early July. That, that we anticipate about a million four increase there. Salary increases, uh, we were looking at about three and a half million. Uh, special education costs, roughly 465. Transportation costs due to energy, uh, basically in fuel, um, and petroleum-based uh, products look like about 300,000. Pension and Social Security increase, about $865,000. Uh, energy and gasoline uh, for the routes uh, for transportation. Uh, due to uh, special ed students or our regular routes, so that was about 300,000. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about a transition to health benefits. That was a concern going into the budget. And PCI tuition, which is every year an amount we pay to the VOTEC for students that attend the VOTEC that live in Wayne. Um, and uh, that is currently uh, 58,368. Just to have a little note, because a PCTI, I know you can't really see it well there, but uh, as of April 29th, there will be a credit provided by uh, the VOTEC for our students, so that is roughly about $49,500. But that is net, and that is included in that $58,000,000. Uh, $58, Some initiatives, um, Envision Math program is in, uh, Authentico Spanish secondary program and other instructional programs to the tune of about ha half a million dollars. We have five FTEs, which uh, two multiple disabled uh, teachers, uh, special ed teachers, two kindergarten teachers, we anticipate, and one sa uh, safety and security technician. Uh, we, we had uh, uh, a $2 million security camera project underway, and we think this position will help uh, support that during the year with all uh, adjustments and just the general maintenance on the system across the whole district. And uh, we also have an anticipated uh, a band equipment and replacement for band instruments. Uh, it's a five-year lease, so the first year out of the 287 lease, uh, we look to have about a $60,000 uh, impact on the budget. Uh, other initiatives here, uh, this is a lease purchase application. We currently use this, we're on a cycle. So uh, what we are looking to do is complete our telephone system upgrade. We're going to voice over IP system. So uh, that'll be phase three. We have a one-to-one -one computer initiative program, which is $500,000 broken out over the grade levels. Uh, and we're, we're spending some money replacing some of our aging buses uh, and some te technically, um, I would say, specific 
uh, equipped buses. So we have two 54 passenger, the big buses, that's 240. Uh, one new lift, uh, that's a chairlift, for, and it's also within a 22 passenger bus. Uh, and then two vans at uh, uh, 24 passengers, 160, and a transportation service vehicle, 60,000. Uh, and we also have included and identified a couple vehicles within our facility department that, needs to, that need to be replaced. Uh, the overall budget, so you have your operating budget, you have your total budget. So as part of our total budget, we continue to receive uh, what they call entitlement funds. And uh, the ESSA, which is Every Student Succeeds Act legislation, which used to be called NCLB, um, that is over half a million dollars. That continues within, within our budget. IDEA also funds uh, various uh, tuition and special ed services for our, uh, uh, our challenged students. Uh, and that's about a million dollars. And again, uh, these are basically used for tuition and, uh, and services for uh, special ed students. Also part of our budget is a debt service component, which was uh, previously approved for the Anthony Wayne Middle School. Um, that will expire at, on uh, 23 to tw uh, 2024 fiscal year, and the yellow is t this year's uh, responsibility. So it's uh, 2.8 is uh, principal and interest, with one more payment scheduled, which would include really interest and, and interest. They're two separate payments. Also, uh, one left in 23, 24. So that'll be falling off, and that's what the board has been talking about over a series of meetings that's happened since January about a potential uh, referendum in the future and planning. So this is why it was important to start that conversation. Some reserve accounts that, again, uh, we mentioned the capital reserve and the maintenance reserve. Um, so what we've used recently or what we're anticipating during the budget year uh, really has started uh, I would say since January, but we continue to use them because we're allowed to take withdrawals out and utilize them. Uh, so capital reserve, uh, we're looking, um, we currently taken out $625,000 for the next gen lab program, which would be the Valley component that went back into the Valley. Um, the district wide security cameras, that two million I was talking about earlier. And then the next phase, which is uh, the science lab program that we're looking at right now, we're looking at the prices they're escalating, unfortunately, but a million and a half might not be the final number, so we're still researching that. That is something we anticipate potentially over the summer, early fall, uh, do, doing that withdrawal. Um, maintenance reserve, these are some of the uses that we've had uh, in the past. Ryerson, partial roof, Wayne Valley, building controls, uh, TD's roof. We anticipate doing that. Uh, we're getting pricing on that. APT roof, we anticipate that being about a million dollars there. Uh, Last meeting uh, was the, was an approval for withdrawal and the maintenance reserve for the venture tower repair, the tennis courts for the high school. That's again, that's a repair, and uh, the clocks uh, at the elementary and middle school is about 100,000. So in total, that was 300,000. Now onto the budget changes, which um, which is a significant situation. It's unique. Uh, it doesn't happen. It's the first time in my career. I've been in here uh, in this field over 20 years. First time I've been part of this, and it, it's it's a uh, a great opportunity to uh, look at the budget uh, due to circumstances that revealed themselves during the year uh, and specifically during the budget approval process. So um, just to bring, we've talked about our last couple of meetings had to do with our health benefits. Uh, we had an opportunity due to uh, renewal being um, extremely high. It was about 27% increase, which in, unfortunately wasn't something that we anticipated in our budget. But in review and discussions with our broker, there was an option to go to, go to the state health plan. Uh, so we were able to save that amount of money and revisit our budget. Um, so the board approved the transition to a new health plan at effective July 1st uh, at their uh, March 31st meeting. Um, and after that meeting, the finance committee with input from the board uh, discussed various different scenarios that uh, we could revisit and maybe address some issues that were of a concern to uh, the, the, the budget, uh, the, I should say the board in, in whole. So uh, some areas that we looked at were reduction in, in taxes and removal of the dependence on general fund balance. Uh, so I'm um, happy to report that uh, we were able to uh, look and reduce the current, again, it was the uh, tentative budget that was approved by the Board of Education, submitted to the county, approved by the county. Uh, so we're able to reduce that from 2% to one and a half. So we have to then uh, approve tonight. It's amended in our um, uh, 
in our action item, which I mentioned earlier. So we'll have to uh, present this to the county office for final approval. So we were able to reduce about $800,000, which is that going from 2% to one and a half. Um, so we're doing uh, that as the first bullet. The second bullet, we're removing the one and a half. So we're free and clear of the budgeted fund balance, which improves our position moving forward to handle un unforeseen uh, events that relate to our facilities or any other type of upgrade or renovations that we may use and potentially and can increase uh, resources for uh, potential referendum discussion. Uh, and the other side of that, so that's revenue and the appropriations side is we're reducing um, the health benefit cost in our budget, the appropriation side. So again, this is going to be detailed. It's approved tonight. If it's approved uh, after consideration, we will then forward it on to the county for final approval. Uh, another slide a little went sideways on us. So uh, tomorrow, again, I'll update, the, again, if it's approved, I'll update a uh, user-friendly budget, and I'll also do a, uh, you'll see this presentation as well as a Q&A that's updated. But right now, the difference, um, it changes, right? So the total budget has, has been reduced uh, about $669,000. Again, this is our operating budget. Uh, it's down to 176 rather than 178. Uh, which is basically a flat budget from year to year, meaning 21, 22 to 22, 23. Um, and what does that mean for the tax levy? So we've gone down uh, about uh, to 161, so that's an actual increase of 2.3, uh, which is the 1.5% growth from year to year. So what I mean is we were projecting with the, te uh, the tentative budget of 2%, but now since it's one and a half, it's still growth. Uh, so it's a one and a half percent increase, and that does change about seventeen dollars. It reduces the average home, uh, which is a hundred nineteen annual commitment to to this uh, uh, real estate tax. Um, again, it still has no bank cap and no waivers, as well as uh, we did not use fund balance because that has been eliminated. Uh, here's a little bit of a grid in case you wanted to try to figure out your own situation. We did the first is in hundred, so it's fifty two annually. Uh, you see the average assessed value home in Wayne is in the, in the middle there at 229,471, and that's 119. And then if you did a half a million, it's 259. Uh, this is the calculation. Again, it, I, I probably can't see it very well, but um, it, it, rather than get too technical, this is a, a way you calculate it. The red is the 119, and that's the average. But um, in the past, we've used the same slide because if you look at the orange area, uh, this is the change in net rateables, right? So you have net evaluations, and that's part of the calculation. It gets complicated, um, but that has gone, it, it has increased slightly, about 0.4%, so that helps your tax rate a little bit um, overall. Um, but again, uh, that's how you calculate the uh, average assessed value as well as the other amounts. Again, this will be posted if you need to see it. So um, this is the summary, uh, and this will be the final amended if approved tonight. So the tax levy again uh, went from 159, uh, increased from 159 last year to 162 this year, at 1.5. State aid again is up 18.88%, 1.4. Budgeted fund balance again is zero. Estimated federal, which is a semi program, which uh, directly relates to special ed costs for the district, we submit it for reimbursement. That's up a little bit, about $128,000, which brings the total operating budget to that 176 number. Again, that's a million. Um, Non-public programs, which is a flow-through uh, funds funding source from the state of New Jersey that we then send on to non-public uh, non schools in our geographic area. Uh, and we're responsible for that uh, administratively, so that's uh, 363. Federal aid, as I, as I spoke, ESEA, which is IDEA, is 1.4 million. Charter schools, which is a small component that we're advised uh, our students that attend charter schools, that's down about 4%. It's, um, I'm sorry, it's down uh, 45% to $23,000. And again, the debt service, again, approved under a separate levy uh, due to a past referendum uh, that we're carrying is down slightly by 4%. It's 2.8, which brings a total budget of $181 million, which is relatively flat when you compare year to year. And again, when I mean year to year, it's year to amended. Uh, 22, uh, 21-22. Next step, again, as I mentioned, uh, if amended tonight, uh, we then submitted for approval to the State County Office, New Jersey Department of Education. 
once it's approved by the county, I anticipate, I, I did mention it to them to expect it. Um, so uh, once they approve it, uh, hopefully there's no uh, revisions that I have to make uh, due to the review. Um, but there is a chance that that does happen because we have to basically go in and open up the budget and recalculate some things. So, uh, so once it's approved by the county, uh, then we'll be ready to go. We make some final changes to our internal system uh, and then open it up for use, uh, meaning the schools can start ordering and departments can start ordering. We anticipate hopefully mid to late May. Uh, hopefully uh, there's no problems with the county office as far as how things are reflected. Uh, and then finally, I do put a little caveat uh, on the bottom here, which has happened over the last couple of years, is the state of New Jersey, when they go negotiate the final budget in June for the state, there's a little bit of a difference of opinion and maybe they change our state aid. So we have gone back and uh, reduced state aid amounts and uh, there's some, some requirements that then we have to follow in approving where that will, will uh, be adjusted in the budget. So there is a chance that it does change after uh, we are using it. So I just wanted to make everybody aware of that. And that uh, concludes this uh, budget hearing. Again, uh, it is going to be V2, Emergent School F uh, Resource under Finance, and it is the amended uh, budget resolution tonight to be considered. And uh, you can speak at uh, either now or at the uh, first session uh, for public comment. Th thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moffitt. Revisions to agenda items, please. I was going to go for water, but I'll think I'll hold off. All right, so we have a few tonight. Oh, under okay. T, uh, emergent human resources, we will be adding under T1, approvals of resignation retirements. We'll be adding number four, which is uh, Jeffrey DeLillo, assistant principal, Wayne Hills High School. Uh, that's uh, the C's assistant principal. It's an FTE of one, UPC code 02-40-42 backslash DMP, account number 11-00240-103-16-010. Uh, resignation date is 8-16-2022. Salary amount of $148,878, which is step nine of the MA guide WTAA salary guide. Uh, under T11, approval of reappointment, uh, reappoint personnel, we're going to add uh, WA personnel staff on number three, uh, 813, Van Houten, comma, Amory, teacher MA 30, step 13, at a salary of $88,175. And um, I have, was, uh, okay, so the last one will be under X legal, and uh, it is uh, under the appeal of HIV determination, and the recommendation uh, reads as follows, resolve that the board affirm the superintendent's decision on HIV case number 74 slash 2021-2022 following an appeal as required by NJSA 18A 37-15 parentheses B parentheses 6 parentheses E and that concludes the changes to tonight's agenda thank you Mr. Moffat I'm sorry I've been remiss I'd like to ask my colleagues if they have any questions or comments regarding the budget. Mrs. Kazan. Just wanted to thank the finance office, uh, specifically Mr. Moffat, Mrs. Leidig, and all of the department for putting together an excellent budget. As he said during his presentation, this is the first time in my tenure that we've ever revised a budget, and um, it's been handled I think very professionally and effectively and all stakeholders were considered and uh, I fully support it and I hope the rest of the board does as well. Thank you. Thank you. 
And I also wanted to thank the administration and particularly Mr. Moffitt and his team um, for the $17 in savings for the average uh, home in Wayne. So. <laughs> thank you. At this time, uh, we are open to the public for agenda items. This portion of the meeting is open to citizens for comment on agenda items only. Residents are to state their names, addresses, and subject matter. Comments may be limited to three minutes per person. Members of the public are discouraged from speaking negatively about an employee or a student. The board bears no responsibility for comments made by the public. Comments regarding employees or students cannot be legally responded to by the board. Other comments may be responded to tonight or at subsequent meetings under old business. Thank you. Do I have a mover? I'll move it. Mr. Pavlak? Mrs. Kazan? Madam President, C. Nope. Thank you, Pamela Masick. I usually wait till the public. I think this is okay to ask this. It was with the budget, right? So I believe that's acceptable. The charter schools, what charter schools are we connected with that, that affects our budget? Uh, that's new to me, so I'd like to under, have a, a better understanding of that and how students, are they attending part public school and, you know, how that works and you know how can I learn about that that's number one and number two we were talking about the budget with um, uh, cameras being security cameras I think it was a hundred thousand dollars are there security cameras in the auditoriums at all the schools so I have those two questions and I don't know if you can answer them tonight thank you Madam President, seeing no one else rise, I move to close public portion. Second. Thank you. Okay. Um, we had committee meetings this evening, so I would like some reports, please. Madam President, unfortunately, I was unable to attend the safety and technology, but I believe Mr. Bubba has a report for myself. I do. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bubba. Um, tonight, Technology Safety Committee met with um, Mr. Prasakis and Mr. Burchard and myself, or Dr. Burchard, sorry. Um, we discussed a phishing training program that we are using so that way staff does not click on email that they shouldn't click on because it happens all the time. Uh, we did a baseline test and this was actually good. We found that 23% of the staff took the bait on the first test, but after some training and walking through some things with staff and pointing out um, what they could look for and what they should, um, we are now down to 6% on the last test. So actually now we're back in industry standards, which is a good thing. Unfortunately, you'll never stop everybody from not clicking where they shouldn't be. Uh, we talked about the NJSOA testing has, is returning this year. Uh, third grade, I believe, starts next week, and then it will follow after that with the rest of the grades from 3 to 11 or 4 to 11. Um, we are looking at our copiers. We are in the fourth of our fifth year agreement on those so we're assessing the aging fleet and we are looking to update them and then we're also looking to areas where we can reassess and go with smaller versions since we've been digital and we're not using as many copiers as we were before um, we launched the let's talk the district launched a new portal to streamline communication from staff and community members this portal called let's talk provides an efficient way for questions comments or suggestions to be heard. And then we discuss the summer projects and the department will continue to complete the final phase of the phone project, which is good. I think there's three schools left for that. And the district is looking to continue its one-to-one -one program as well as complete network upgrades as we keep adding devices we need to keep upgrading. 
And that is my report. Thank you, Mr. Bubba. Uh, Mrs. Kazan. Thank you, Madam President. This evening, the Finance Committee met myself, Mr. Moffat, Mrs. Leidig. We discussed the items on the agenda, the standard monthly financial reports, the cooperative pricing agreements, which are standard, um, monies being returned to the general fund, which are basically interest dollars on money that's been sitting in escrow waiting to be used. Um, we discussed the annual contract renewals, all again are standard. Uh, the only one that changed is Sodexo with a 2% reduction because they're still doing okay financially with all of the money that we received during the pandemic. Uh, we discussed the health benefits and the renewal and how that's going to impact the business office because they were going to be having open enrollment in May and that includes every district employee having to be um, put into the state system. It's going to it's going to be a, a monumental task, but um, they're already in training for it. <laughs> Mrs. Leidick will be spearheading that. Uh, the annual solicitations for professional contracts have gone out. We'll be getting those numbers in at the end of May and obviously discussing at the beginning of June, and the board will move forward with those. Discuss the health benefit broker contract, which is still pending. Um, some fine tuning required there. And we discussed tonight's final budget hearing and how that will be presented. And the $225 per student credit that we're receiving from PCTI, who uh, gets a heck of a lot of more state aid than we do. And they received such a windfall. Uh, there were quite a few boards that uh, pushed back, friends of mine actually, uh, one in particular, uh, who's been on about that for many, many years. And I can't believe we finally successfully got them to give us a credit. So that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Kazan. Mrs. Wentek. Thank you. Um, so the Education Committee met today. It was myself, Mrs. Padup, and Mrs. Reichman. Um, we reviewed uh, a policy. We also reviewed the minutes from the last meeting. Um, we reviewed a request for a foreign exchange student. Um, and the updated certification for the New Jersey Health and Physical Education Standard, where the curriculum will be developed during this summer and approved this fall. Um, there'll be more information coming on that later. Uh, summer reading lists were also reviewed for the elementary and secondary schools. Um, we also reviewed the tuition agreement for a student. Um, we talked about the communication post-secondary process and how to help high school students who are graduating and their families with the process of um, leaving our schools. And we also reviewed the request for a weighted grading for enriched classes. The committee is being assembled and will meet this summer. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next is action on our agenda. Yes, Mr. Prasakos. Uh, we, oh. we have to move it first. Madam President, I'd make a motion that we move the entire agenda onto consent. Oh, thank sorry. you. Okay, Mr. Pavlak, Mr. Duffy, thank you. Discussion, Mr. Prasakos. Yeah, I have a question on um, K.1, the approval of the Booster Club guidelines. Um, my copy uh, was a draft, so. I was just wondering if the booster clubs needed to provide uh, any attestation or do we have any signatures proving that, that the majority of the booster clubs are in favor of, of these guidelines? So I wasn't sure if it was a draft or if this is a final copy and if we have any attestation from. So we do not um, because the booster club guidelines simply include now the board's policies. So we did have a discussion about where we were with the Booster Club guidelines. Um, and as, like I said, as a result of some additional changes, the Booster Club guidelines really, all it includes is the board policy. So other people would not, other, other um, members of the community would not necessarily vote to make changes to the board's policies. Okay, I mean, I, what, I, what I specifically was looking for was, you know, for example, the uh, baseball team booster club, you know, are they in favor, you know, or do we have anything that, you know? We did not hold a vote. But again, that's because we have um, basically 
um, there's a document, the booster club guidelines call for the booster clubs to follow the board's policy. And so if you look at the current version, there was reporting requirements and some other information that the booster clubs were concerned about. And so the booster clubs were also concerned about the ability to fund insurance. Mm -hmm. So now we have the umbrella booster clubs at each of the high schools. And there's, a, there's language in there that represents that understanding. And there is also information in the booster club guidelines about, um, so, for the, so for the insurance, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's, that, was a very, that was a very important point of discussion. So no, there was no sign off page, but there, is, there was an agreement at our, our most recent meeting. It does reflect what was said at the last meeting. And it does include, like I said, the, the provisions about forming the umbrella clubs at each of the high schools. Mm -hmm. That's really what was agreed to. The rest is just the board's policy. The other, the other part of it is there is a contract. So under the board's policy, I believe number two, under for guidance for booster clubs, the policy calls for all booster clubs to enter into a contract, but the contract itself just is a, is a summary of the board's policies. So in other words, they're agreeing to follow the board's policies. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Blanting? Yes. Um, mine was a section O number eight approving contract numbers 42. We mentioned Sodeco. I wonder if there is anything that we can do that specifies with the quality of the meals being provided. I know um, a lot of parents had come to me with their kids don't want to eat the food, so they either have to pack it or the high school kids leaving the schools uh, more often to get their lunches. So I wonder what, what can we do to um, look into it? Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other comments? Okay. Um, at this time, we will vote on the agenda items. Thank you. Mr. Moffat, roll call. Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Wentick? Mr. Bubba? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mrs. Kazan? Yes. Mr. Pavlak? Yes, and on emerging T number nine, number 11, uh, I'll abstain on number 555. Yes to the rest. So abstain on 555, right? Yes. And then was it no on emergent T911? No. I'm abstaining. On abstaining on both. Thank you. Mr. Prasakos? Yes. And Mrs. Putup? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. The next portion is public comment on any topic. The portion of this meeting is open to citizens for comment on any topic. Residents are to state their names, addresses, and subject matter. Comments may be limited to three minutes per person. Mem members of the public are discouraged from speaking negatively about an employee or a student. The board bears no responsibility for comments made by the public. Comments regarding employees or students cannot be legally responded to by the board. Other comments may be responded to tonight or at subsequent meetings under old business. Thank you. Do I have a mover? I move. Second. Okay. Mr. Posakos, Mr. Pavlov. Good evening, everyone. My name is Paul Wolford, 44 Powderhorn Drive. I'm here to speak about uh, the enrichment sequence. I'm here representing some concerned parents. I do want to thank Dr. Toback and Ms. Reichman for their time. We had some great dialogue on the subject. I'm very happy to see that the board's considering um, and will be implementing the process of a district goal next year around the enrichment sequence. However, what I'm here tonight to do is to implore you to reconsider. Reconsider your timeline. Time is of the essence. Let's act now. I know this has been something the board's been considering for three to four years. Here we are four years later talking about an enrichment sequence still. 
We have kids, and I tell you with certainty, not maximizing their potential. If I told you there's one child in our school system that was not maximizing your potential, I'm sure all of you would be very concerned. I'll tell you that there are dozens, if not hundreds, currently in our high school system that are not maximizing their potential. They're enrolling in courses below their ability level to play the numbers game. There's no incentive for them to go into the enriched courses. It's, it, it's, it's, it's very simple. And I can't blame them, and you can't, but we can act now. That being said, we already have it instituted, instituted in our catalog an enrichment sequence. It states they move at a faster pace. It states they dive deeper into the standards. That equates to more work. You have kids putting in eight to 10 hours of work for each course, each week, extra, for no incentive. They are compared to students in Lakeland, who I'm sorry to say, we've always led the way in state county schools. Lakeland now offers a sequence with a weight of 0.33 above a normal scale. We don't. You have students dropping down into CP classes next year. You will. You will have them dropping down next year to play the numbers game. There's no incentive so that they can get into colleges of their choice. Now, there are some colleges that look a little bit deeper than GPA. However, we all know coming out of the pandemic, there's more weight on GPA and class rank now. There's no longer a mandatory score for your um, SATs and ACTs, standardized tests. That being said, schools like Ohio State who receive 50,000 applications a year are not gonna filter through all those applications to figure out what the weighting system was for each school. You have to pass the eye test. Let's give our kids a shot of having the higher GPA and passing the eye test and going on to round two. Not to mention merit scholarships. Just increasing your GPA by 0.1 or 0.2 can save a taxpayer $8,000 over the course of four years for college. $8,000. People with multiple children, you're talking about 24,000. Take this, my three minutes is up. Yes, Thank sir. you for your consideration. Thank you. Cindy, Cindy Simon Wayne. Um, I agree with everything he said. I'm gonna add a few more points. Um, in addition to the scholarship game, National Honor Society as well as some of the other honor societies, they have a fixed GPA that you need to get in and stay in. So if you're a student in an enriched class, it's a harder class, you risk lowering your GPA even though you're doing harder work. Right, so again, there's this incentive to play the numbers game by the students rather than reach up to their potential. More importantly, when they get to college, a lot of students are not as prepared as they need to be to do the college level work and the amount of work. One way to get more prepared is to be in that enrichment sequence because then you are used to having to do more work. You're also delving in deeper. You have more knowledge. So those are all reasons, in addition to what the previous gentleman said, to support weighting enrichment sequences. We should reward effort, so those students that are doing it should be rewarded for it, and we should encourage people to seek their best. The other thing I want to just say has nothing to do with enrichment whatsoever. I want to commend the folks who are getting creative in terms of using QR codes to save paper and programs and stuff like that in some of the uh, recent band concerts. And I want to encourage people to continue to do things that save paper, that save toner, not only because it's environmentally sound, but it saves us money in the budget. Thank you. Hello, good evening. Rabbi Mayor Gurkha of the Chabad Center, 194 Ratzer Road. Um, this past April, the CDC released a report on the teen mental health crisis using the 2021 national representative data from U.S. high schools. Historically, the percentage of U.S. teens who reported persistent feelings of sadness or hopelessness increased from 26% in 2009 to 37% in 2019. So from 26 to 37, 11 points. Seriously considering suicide also increased from 2009 to 2019, and actual suicide attempts increased from 6 to 9% in those 10 years. 
the 2021 rates that were just released are even higher. 44% of teens, 44% of teens reported persistent feelings of sadness and hopelessness, similar to the symptoms of a major disruptive disorder, depressive disorder. 20% of teens reported serious, seriously considering attempted suicide. 20% of teens in 2021 and 9% recorded an actual suicide attempt. When it comes to girls, the numbers are even higher. The study concluded, based on the findings, that comprehensive strategies that improve connections with others at home, in the community, and at school might foster improved mental health amongst youth and amongst those around them after the pandemic. On January 20th of this year, I stood before this board to address the mental health crisis in our public schools and to offer a free, simple, proven, and impactful tool to combat it, a moment of silence. Since then, in February, Wayne Valley High School was selected to receive a grant from the state of New Jersey for um, enabling up to 10% of the staff to help students in a teen mental health first aid initiative at uh, Wayne Valley. Just this week, it was announced that Wayne Township Public Schools is partnering with Gaggle to launch a new Speak Up for Safety tip line that will allow students to easily report threats of violence, bullying, peers in crisis, and other imminent threats to them and those around them and their well-being. So again, I stand before you here a few months later. After all of these developments, I would certainly not say that I can predict the future, but on January 20th, I stood up here and um, the Talmud says that who is wise, one who sees the future. Obviously, the Talmud is not saying that we are prophets, but the Talmud is saying that if we are wise, we will be able to see down the road, and that is what a wise person would do. So I commend the township for implementing these two new initiatives, but based on the report uh, that was released in April, I would, um, it would behoove the township to possibly consider, again, what I call a free, simple, and proven tool to help those with a mental health uh, or uh, societally health, I would call it right now, in our public schools, 44% of teens who are seriously contemplating um, some sort of depression or suicide attempt. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Madam President, seeing no one else rise, I move to close the public portion. Second. This is Kassan. Okay, thank you. Um, at this time, uh, I would like to congratulate someone in the audience, uh, Dr. Kimberly Moreno, who we have just hired to be the new assistant principal at Wayne Valley High School. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Okay. Business, uh, Dr. Toback. Actually, for the, the one question we have, I would like Mr. Moffat, he has uh, some answers to the question. There was a budget question related to um, charter schools. To elaborate a little bit more, um, the state of New Jersey, when they release our state aid figures uh, in March, they provide us information for uh, students that would attend a charter school, um, and we have to provide funding for that and add it or I should, should say detail it in our budget. Uh, that's why you saw in tonight's um, slide presentation. A little bit background, uh, over time, Wayne has had a, a few students, one or two, uh, throughout the years that have attended charter schools in either Patterson or Garfield. We are obligated as a district that if they're our residents and they attend, uh, funding will flow from the district to the charter schools as per regulations. Uh, so that is the requirement, and that's why you see it tonight. There is an enrollment process where uh, these individual students and their families have to register in our district, and we confirm their residency here uh, to then transfer the funds uh, to them in the form of a check or um, uh, basically a check uh, for that individual as a form of tuition, usually divided over a 12 or 10 month uh, span of time, depending on what the charter schools may uh, need. Um, so that's kind of the process as it relates to the budget, and that is a little bit about residency. Uh, it is a requirement. Uh, there are charter schools uh, across, the, across the state, but uh, since I've been here, they've only been uh, like two or three charter schools in both the communities, again, from Patterson and, and Garfield. 
and I think you had an, uh, also a, a question on uh, the cameras. Uh, I have to be very sensitive because it is our security system, but uh, $2 million is for a new system. We do have current cameras. Uh, I will tell you if there are some areas as we move through that are uh, uh, like outside uh, spaces or inside spaces that we feel need a camera, we'll reevaluate it, maybe do a second phase, uh, and we'll look closely at auditoriums. It's my understanding that we don't have cameras in the auditoriums, but that might change as we move through each individual building. And, and, and if we reevaluate it, we may add them down the line in another phase. And that's. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Could, could you uh, come up and uh, address our administrator after the meeting? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. New business, board members. Comments? Mr. Prasakos. I just wanted to thank all the teachers and staff that make a difference every single day, being that it's Teacher Appreciation Week and uh, Nurse Appreciation Week and Special Education Week. Uh, I also wanted to congratulate the valedictorians and the salutatorians of our high schools. Uh, I want to congratulate all the students that committed to their colleges uh, this past week. Um, and uh, to all their guardians, congratulations. Um, to those pursuing the trades, I hope they have their trade school or, or apprenticeships lined up after graduation. And um, uh, Mayor Gurkoff, uh, nice to see you again. Thank you for, for bringing up, uh, it is Mental Health Awareness Month. And uh, you know that moment of silence, I think, uh, uh, is very important. Um, I also wanted to uh, say that I, I inspected and visited 13 out of the 15 schools along with some of the other board members. And you know, a lot of the schools, all, all the schools need uh, uh, renovations, you know, particularly windows replaced, roofs, water issues um, that we're seeing. So you know, I'd like to encourage um, the administrators um, and, and this board to get a strategic planning committee uh, made up of citizens to um, you know, get this bond referendum moving forward so we can um, start renovations and um, look into the uh, uh, necessary expansion. Um, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Other board members? Mrs. Kazan? I also want to congratulate our teachers and appreciate everything they do for us, um, as well as all the other people who are being honored this month. I'm sure everybody should get their own week, but it doesn't look like it's going to work out that way. The nurses, special education week, everybody got kind of crammed in together here. Um, I wanted to respond to the rabbi. Uh, I looked into your policy that you brought up at the last meeting. And while it does say that we can, the decision as to how that's affected is made locally at each school. Every school in this district is known for having its own climate, its own personality. Um, and one of the things I noted in our walkthroughs is all of the positive messaging throughout the buildings, um, the types of campaigns they run about uh, no place for hate and student um, kindness week and the pillars and uh, of uh, behavior at GW, for instance, um, it, it's noteworthy. When you go through the schools, it's, it's almost palpable. It's every, everything you see, the, the messaging is on the walls and murals throughout the buildings. Um, I think we do a very effective job of uh, making our students feel safe and loved and the kindness is there. And that's definitely going a long way as much as we possibly can to uh, deal with the mental health crisis. And we have other very important programs in place that aren't so visible. Um, and I think our staff does a tremendous job of making sure all of our students are safe and uh, their mental health issues are addressed. Um, the enrichment obviously uh, will be taken care of over the summer along with all the other curriculum items. I look forward to the committee work on that. Uh, and the board definitely, to agree with you, Mr. Prasakos, needs to 
get together and start talking about the issues at our schools. There's only so much we can do through capital and maintenance reserve funds. Um, so with the influx of new housing, uh, it's going to be a challenge. So we definitely have to start addressing that and soon because our bond, our debt is expiring and that's the time to address it at little or no cost to the taxpayer if possible. So thank you. Uh, just say thank you to our uh, teachers, our nurses, our special ed staff. Um, we're not back to normal in education. We can say we're back to normal in schools because we're in school five days a week. The social mo emotional part of being back in school is still a struggle, as the rabbi said. We are, do we are leaps and bounds beyond other school districts in what we offer. And we continue to offer and we continue to improve on. Um, and I thank all those people for what they've done and what they continue to do every day. In the classroom, the nurses, our special ed staff, everyone who shows up and gives us 110%. Uh, just a brief comment about the budget, this is in my tenure here, this is the first time we've had the ability to set ourselves up for the future. Most of the time with the budget, we're playing catch up. The last big budget shock we had was probably about, was under the Christie administration when our state aid went from $4 million to 125000 And we had three days to figure it out. It's nice to be in a position where you can set this district up for the years to come. That's what a school budget's about. Yes, it's about the here and now. It's about providing the best future for our students and putting them in the right place when they leave us and they move on, whether it's academically or it's into a trade. That's what it's about. But it's also about planning for the future. This budget has done that. We, we, as I said, first time ever in my tenure here that we've been able to go forward and take some, and reduce substantial debt that we had moving forward. So it puts us in a better place next year and the following year and every year after. So I thank Mr. Moffitt, his entire team for, for doing a, a outstanding job this year. And with the late state aid numbers, that didn't help. And it really, I, th I thank everybody for what they did. Thank you. Well, I'd be remiss not to uh, take this opportunity to sit this dais without thanking all of our teachers um, for all their hard work, um, not just what they contribute to our children, the money that they take out of their pockets to make their classroom an educational experience for all of our children. Uh, on top of them, the paras, you know, as far all the way down to the people who just work in our schools. Um, they just make it all an educational experience. But first and foremost, I need to take this opportunity to thank all of the teachers that had me, <laughs> because I know I wasn't easy. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, I would like to add my thanks to our teachers, our nurses, our principals, and welcome aboard to our new vice principal. Um, and next week, special education week, uh, special education is something I think Wayne does really, really well. And it is dear to my heart. And on the school tours that were mentioned by Mr. Prasakos, it was evident that many of our schools are bursting at the seams because our special ed population needs extra room, extra care, 
Um, we need more paraprofessionals uh, for their support. That's another group I'd like to thank. Um, so moving forward, I want to thank the business office, Mr. Moffat, Mrs. Leidig, for giving us such a good fiscal footing to move forward on into the future. But the kids are the future. And to that end, that's why we are here. Uh, I appreciate the input that our parents want to give us uh, with some of the issues that we're looking at here in the district. Um, that's important. That's how we move forward and build a consensus to help each and every one of our students. Um, I have a Yankees necklace on tonight. I'm not necessarily a Yankees fan all of the time. Uh, but I had the honor of being invited to opening day of Little League. Uh, Mr. Prasakos was there, uh, many of our town council people, Mayor Vergano. It was just a wonderful event. 700 children participate. That's what we want. That's we, it's participation. And that goes the same for education in our schools. We want our students to participate, to actively participate. So I got this necklace because I promised Mr. Tempescu that I would wear it to a board meeting. So please, if you see him, please let him know that I did. And thank you for the invitation. I appreciate it. And thank you for all the activities um, that we have in Wayne, in the schools, in our township for our kids. And have a wonderful week. And see you next time. Good evening. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, second. Thank you.